Fasting to know God Fasting causes you to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Your hungry pleas for God's presence can reach God's heart. Being intimate with God One of the most amazing stories in the Bible was about Absalom, David's son who had difficulty entering the throne room to see his father. Absalom had fled from his father because of his previous sin. Absalom did eventually return to Jerusalem, but there was no reconciliation. 2 Samuel 14, 28 Absalom lived two years in Jerusalem without seeing the king's face. He was in the city, but could not visit his father in the throne room. Is it possible to be in the king's city and not see his face? When was the last time you invited God to join you in fellowship while you ate dessert? We've mastered the art of entertaining guests in our home. We know how to make them feel at ease, how to feed them, and how to keep them entertained. What about God, though? In our lives, have we mastered the art of entertaining God? Do we know how to invite God into our lives in the same way that we meet people at the front door and invite them into our homes? Do you know where God can sit in your life if you invite him in? Have you learned how to praise and worship God? Most of us only come into his presence to seek his hand in response to prayer and then go about our daily lives. But we must go beyond just looking for his hand. We must also look for his heart. When a young man asks his sweetheart for her hand in marriage, he clearly wants more than just her hand. We begin with the hand because it represents the heart. Long before there is an embrace, a young man holds the woman's hand. We must go beyond simply requesting things from his hand and instead fall in love with his heart. First, when you come to know God through salvation, you make a once and for all commitment that grants you eternal life. It develops into a lifelong learning experience. Knowing God is a daily endeavor. Jesus said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23. Your fast may not be limited to just giving up food. It may imply foregoing other aspects of your life, such as recreation or relaxation, your time or money, or the pursuit of any other pleasure. Be willing to follow God on a daily basis by putting these things behind you in order to seek Christ's presence. He is patiently waiting for you to find him. Fast when you're scared. The word fast comes from the Hebrew word som, which means to afflict yourself. When you are threatened, set aside time to fast and then retreat to God's quiet presence. The shepherd will welcome you and guard you. What's scaring you today? Maybe your problem is not your real problem. Many things that frighten us never happen, and our greatest fear is fear itself. Are you scared of shadows? Are you afraid of what might happen? The psalmist said he would not be afraid of death shadows when walking through dark valleys. When shadows scare you, take time to fast and seek God's presence. There is no darkness in God's presence, nor is there any shadow. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. John 18, 12, KJV. Fasting can bring light to your night. Fasting can help you see the light at the end of the tunnel. We can eat in the presence of our enemies because the Lord is our shepherd. Has God recently prepared a good hot meal for you? Get your attitude toward God in order and ask him to walk with you through your danger. He will remove your fear of the shadows if you trust him. Remember that shadows are not real. They vanish when fully illuminated. Learn how to react appropriately in times of danger. 
Make time for a spiritual feast because the Lord has set a table in the presence of your foes and your cup overflows. Fasting from earthly food is obviously insufficient. We must also make time to eat heaven's nourishment. Do we listen to the voice of the enemy that is trailing us as we go? No. When we fast, we learn to look to God. 